You're listening to the Untitled Car Show in partnership with RightFootDown.com. Visit RightFootDown for your daily automotive fix. If you enjoyed today's program, please tell a friend. It's the best way to support this show. If you want to visit the archives, go to YouTube and search for Untitled Car Show. That'll bring you to the archived episodes. If you want to follow this show, just search for Untitled Car Show on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can always send an email to the show at Untitled Car Show at rightfootdown.com. We're so glad you decided to spend the next hour or so with us. Without further ado, let's get into today's program. Hello and welcome to the Untitled Car Show. I am your host, Ike. Today we have Eric Rude. He is... um. Well, he's a lemons guy. I guess that's the best way to do it. What is your official title over there with the uh, 24 Hours of Lemons folks? That is an excellent question. Um, that, I don't think we ever settled on an actual title, but uh, I call myself the Lemon Stooge or contributor, something to that effect, mm-hmm. media jerk, something <laughs> like that. So so what is, what is it that you're in charge of over there with the lemons guys? I guess it's a good place to start this whole thing off with. Sure. Uh it's a little bit of everything. Um, I literally just got hired to work for them full time a month ago, so I'm still kind of figuring that out. Um, at the moment, I've been kind of in charge of doing some of the marketing and the planning for HoopDecon, mm-hmm. which is uh, at the next 24 Hours of Lemons race uh, this coming weekend at Sonoma Raceway, uh, and it's a normal 24 hour. Lo- 24 hours of lemons race but uh, we also have a bunch of awesome car shows in the paddock and some other stuff going on so uh have been putting that together and i think once we get that done we'll kind of work on titles and stuff but uh yeah it's like um you know uh my crazy sister decided to wait till after the baby was born to give the well i don't know what her name is going to be because i haven't met her yet it's like right. so they're waiting to give you the name until they figure out you know We'll give him the title after we get to the point where we decide if we like him enough or not. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to keep me around, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's been a while since we had, uh, I guess, technically your boss, Jay, on, you know, a couple of years mm-hmm. ago. And uh, there's been a lot of changes over there with the Lemons guys, you know, when, yeah. you know, you've had the rally, the HoopDecon, and, you know, uh, you got the concourse stuff. You, you got a lot of... Mm-hmm fun and exciting stuff that I don't think a lot of people know who aren't in the Lemons universe. So let's kind of just go over the different stuff we can do if we want to, if we want to engage in, let's call it, I don't know, Lemon Party. Don't Google that. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I heard that one. Yeah, I know, really. It's (laughs) terrible internet meme stuff. At least you're not like the 24 hours of Goatsy. You know, that could be worse. Yes. Um, Yeah. Again, don't Google that. Um, you know, the 24 hours of two girls, one cup. Uh, has there <laughs> – well, we're just going down a hole there, and that's no, yeah. pun, no pun intended on that one. So, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. So um, l- let's kind of break it down. So there's the – obviously there's the racing series, the 24 hours of lemons, which is, you know, $500 cars – racing around the circuit for, you know, 24 hours on average. Um, Mm. Not all at the same time with most of these cars. Um, Right. Yeah. (laughs) Non-consecutive hours usually. Yeah. So. Um, Yeah. It's, it's about 15 hours usually over, over two days, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, yeah, that's $500 cars, crappy cars, break a car, fix it, get it back on track, break the car, repeat. Mm -hmm. So. And, you know, there, there, there's a lot of, you, so I think the thing is, there's a lot of people who wanted to get into that community, but didn't really have access to, because it is it is the cheapest way to get into racing. So you know, but that's still yeah. the best way to make a small fortune is to start with a large one and get into <laughs> racing. So there's yeah. that. Um, still true. Yeah. So you know, there's you know the safety equipment and everything, and like you know, coordinating. Hopefully, I was going to do an event in April, but planning and you know budget being what it is and i guess you know 
the guy building the car can't do it fast enough because he's got himself a uh, robot leg. So uh, we're going to do the one in September, I think, is the plan. And I'm not holding myself to that. But, you know, it's still four or five people. You're still looking at close to $1,000. And then you got to get, you know, the safety equipment for yourself involved. So there's still, you know, 1500 bucks to race for an endurance race is cheap. But that's still a big ask for people. So then there was um, yeah. kind of the next best thing, which is the Lemons Rallies. So, yes. which I've done one of those. Well, I've did two ish days. Sorry of about it. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again, I still I still curse you every time. Like you said, it was you said it was reliable. So I I still almost feel bad about that. Almost. <laughs> almost. Well, it, it, it's. It gave me a wonderful story, and uh, my buddy Nick, who did it with me, will never let me let it live it down. He's like, so... Yes. Because yeah. he famously asked me on the way there, so does this car have four disc brakes all the way around, or is it drums in the rear? And I went, I don't know. It's a Volvo. It's reliable. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> went, fine. Everything's yeah, fine. It'll be good. It's yeah. fine. So, but that's kind of... You can bring... It's run what you brung, basically. So, yeah. I think... The question I get a lot when people ask me about it is, you know, does it have to be a $500 or less car? Like, how does it work? And, you know, obviously you know better than I, but, you know, it's you just run what you bring. You show up. You can drive your, you know, mom's Camry during the course or yeah. you can, you know, drive the world's shittiest car. It's just it's how you want to run yeah. the race. So, yeah, that's exactly it. It's, um, you know. Basically, the newer your car, or, you know, whatever, if you bring in mom's Camry, uh, you're just not going to score enough points to win. You can still go and have fun on the rally. Uh, it's kind of – it's basically a big scavenger hunt across the country or, you know, across the route, uh, which is usually about 2,000 miles over four or five days. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's a long day, but you're in the car with friends and doing stupid stuff. Uh, and that, that's kind of the big sell to it. And then – uh you know, the masochism you want to pile on top of that is, is totally up to you. If you want to run a, you know, a 58 Edsel, you know, that, that can be your thing. Or, yeah, uh, borrow a car from Ma and, and be gone for a week, you know. That's fine, too. Maybe mm -hmm. tell her before you do that, but, you know. <laughs> eh. Well, Will anyone really know if a Camry goes missing, you know? That's an excellent point. That's an excellent point, mm -hmm. yeah. That that is yeah. the automotive equivalent of a if a Camry gets stolen, does anybody care? Um, yeah, ah, man, how is there not like some kind of crossover with Camry and camouflage? Like, is Camouflage a thing? I feel like it should be a thing. I, I feel like that's an idea. Like that, there needs to be like a um, team idea uh, pin board, like somewhere in the you know offices or on yeah. the forums where people can just pitch yeah. the stupidest ideas like Camry flush, I think would be a good one. You know, that, yeah. that can be number one on the board right there. So, yeah. so those are kind of like the two events I kind of know the most about, but then there's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm going to let you kind of go into the different events here because we're starting sure. to get out of my depth. So what else is there to do yeah. in the uh, community? Yeah. Uh, so we also do, the Concours de Lemons, which is uh, kind of a, you know, it's a car show uh, for lemony type cars. So, you know, stuff that's super rare but generally not valuable or, you know, really nice examples of crappy cars or really crappy examples of crappy cars. Um, the the one in California, there's always the Cosworth Vega guys all show up. So usually like a half dozen of those, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and that's a Concours show usually judged uh, i think they have three of them this four of them this year um so they do one at uh the midi which is the vintage race at road atlanta in i'm gonna look that up real quick in april and april they do one in detroit just the head of uh head of woodward they do one in monterey at the end of car week uh they're doing the first one in australia um in september and then uh, we're, they're having one at HoopDecon here, um, which, like I said, is is a lemons race with a bunch of awesome car shows in the paddock, which is uh, Concourse to Lemons uh, and Bulletproof. Both of those are run by the same guy, Alan Galbraith, who's an awesome dude. Uh, and then HoopDecon also has Radwood, 
which is going to be awesome. That's 80s and 90s cars. And then uh, we got a few cars coming from the Gambler 500, uh, Lemons Rally. Some of the West Coast people are coming out. And then the Arcane Auto Society, which is kind of like the Concours to Lemons people, like, turned up to 11. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of everything. And then we also have races that we've uh, – we run in Australia and New Zealand – uh, and that's kind of a franchise deal where we license the name to them, and then they run their own events. So it's it's a separate company per se uh, running Lemons events. Um, mm. And by all accounts, they totally get it. Like everything I've seen is is hilarious from what they're doing down there. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's the Australians, first of all. I don't know why. <laughs> right. we, we have a fairly decent listenership in Australia. So thanks, everyone. Mm. Um, yeah. Not a lot of Kiwis, so those guys, you know, go Australia, boo mm-hmm. Kiwis. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost all the listeners there. Um, yeah, you lost all seven of them. Uh, yeah, they're, I don't know. They're, they're journeying into Mordor anyway. So they'll be okay. <laughs> they're lost in a Hobbit house. Um, yes. But, like, you know, beer, V8s, and, you know, crazy are kind of like the three things yeah. I think about when I think of Australia, so... You know. Yeah, my my favorite thing to say about Australia is that uh, only Australia and Finland can out America America, and they do a really good job of it. So, this is true. Yeah, my favorite fact is I guess there was I forget which race it was, but they um, barred people from bringing beer into the or they limited the amount of beer to like a case per person that they could bring in. So people were yeah. going ahead. They were getting like the spotters notes or something, and they were burying kegs in the ground. I was like, "Perfect." Yeah, that that, that sounds is, like Bathurst. That's yeah. totally a Bathurst thing. Yeah, I believe it was. Uh, and, <laughs> I mean, it's I, I cr- crazy everywhere, and and that's kind of the thing that Lemons gets to do is you get to be this, you, you get to embrace the crazy of the car culture. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Radwood at HoopDecon and then, like, the Gambler guys are coming in. Like, mm-hmm. is there any animosity there? I've had both of you all on my show, <laughs> so, I, you know, but you're kind of like, no. you know, the same sides Not of the same coin or different sides of the same coin. So, well, that's good. Yeah, no, I've uh, I've talked to Tate, uh, talked to Tate when we invited them to come down. And, yeah, he's a super cool dude and basically was like, like, you know, what you guys are doing with the Lemons Rally and what we're doing with the Gambler is really, you know, two parts of the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, and it benefits us if we're working together rather than trying to compete for people. And and it's two, like, like I said, different things that mm-hmm. probably attract a lot of the same people. You know? mm-hmm. And they're cheap enough also, both of them, that you can do you can do both events pretty easily. So. Mm-hmm. The way I look at it is uh, the lemons is for the people who want to sleep in hotel rooms at night, the rallies, and the uh, yeah. gambler is like, let me just sleep outside with a whole bunch of strangers. Like, that's kind of like you know, right. yeah. whatever your scene is. So, I mean, we touched on this a little bit. So when it comes to your background in lemons, you were obviously a judge and you're still a judge, I assume, on a lot of these events. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll still be doing that, and I do a lot of the um, the official media stuff. So you know, we go and shooting photos at races and and writing the recaps and everything. Then end up on uh, on Roadkill dot com, mm-hmm. which is our our official repository at the moment for lemon stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll still be doing all that stuff. And well, uh, yeah, how that came to be is kind of a weird story, I guess. Um, so I didn't really grow up with cars, so to speak. I mean, I did and I did like oil changes and stuff, but I never like worked on cars. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a friend talked me into building a Lemons car just kind of out of the blue. Uh, so I raced for a couple of years and then ran out of money as one does. <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, I'd gone to school for journalism. So I was like, eh, I'm not actually using this degree for anything. <laughs> So I kind of just started writing about lemons and trying to tell people's stories because, yeah, I mean, you go to a given lemons race and there's, you know, 100 cars there and there's 500 stories because everybody there has their own their own take on it. Um, so, I mean, I, I was doing my best to kind of tell a few of those. And then uh, was that working at a race uh, up here around Chicago and talking to Phil, Judge Phil, Merrily Martin, to the Internet. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, yeah, he asked me if I w- was interested in judging a race and kind of 
fell into everything from there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's just kind of a, you know, I never really set up to be a cart writer, I guess, was was the the takeaway there, and it just kind of happened, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's interesting to me because it's kind of the, it's a note that kind of echoes through a lot of the people I've had on the show in the past mm-hmm. where it's, you know, a lot of people, they go to school for one thing and then they end up, you know, getting pulled into, you know, car world for one reason or another, whether they grew up with it or not. And it's interesting to me because I've read a lot of your articles on the Roadkill site, which is like most of them are great. And more, more about me would be appreciated, but it's fine. You know, sure. I was only there I'll, once, I'll on but yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, I'll be there again. So just next time, just all, all about Ike. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and some, some Portillo's talk too, would be great. But, um, the, we can do that, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, it's fascinating because you write such great articles. They're fun to watch. Do you do the photography that goes along with it as well? Or is that someone else on the site? Uh, it, it depends if I'm at a race. Yeah. I'm there shooting photos, but if Phil's there, he's shooting too. And if Nick's Nick Pon, um, one of the other Lemons HQ people, um, and one of the guys who's been there since the beginning, he shoots photos also. Mm-hmm. So it's usually one of the three of us is at a given race, mm-hmm. uh, shooting photos and, uh, gathering the video for the recap videos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh. yeah, if I, if I'm there, I'm, I'm using my photos yeah. just because I have a big ego about it. <laughs> of course, you know, yours are obviously the best. I mean, that's just what it yeah, is. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. There's there's that little like rude touch on top, like the little extra seasoning salt. Like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's, it's, that, it's it's that part of the photo that's usually way out of focus <laughs> that I end up using. <laughs> well, that's how you make the crap cars look so good. You just kind of like it, smear a little Vaseline on the lens, it, and they all look great. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's so interesting because like everyone who ends up having a job in this like it almost in this you know, field almost always seems to like fall into it for one way or another. And I, I just, Hey, got to commend you for doing a good job. And I, now I have to know, you know, so you're, you're writing these articles and then why do they come or not? Why? Cause I've seen your social media presence before they come to you and pull you in for the media stuff. So obviously, cause you can handle social, you can handle the Twitters. So, yeah. Um, and then you're helping put together the other stuff like the uh, recap of the races and the rallies that they do now on the YouTubes. I sound so old yes. when I say that on the YouTubes. Um, on the YouTubes. Yeah. Like the Walmarts. Yes. <laughs> Have you used the <laughs> Amazons? It's good. Um, uh, man, I'm getting old. But uh, it's, I mean, it's got to be a fun, different experience every time you go out and you do something. It's got to be. You know, I'm mm-hmm. sure when you leave, you have like a kit to go out and do stuff, but you're always running into something you don't quite expect. Yeah, uh, every race is a little different, and and I think one of the big challenges, not just for me, but for for the the entire Lemon staff, is you know we do uh, 20 races a year, and you know guys like Nick and Phil have been doing it for 10 years. You know that, and they're over 80, 100 races each. So, I mean, it's 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 kind of a challenge to show up at, a, you know, quote, unquote, another Lemons race and, and and not think of it as, you know, like, oh, I'm I'm working because, you know, it's it, it, it is unique. It's totally different. Everything you, know, you may see some of the same people, but you're going to see new people and new cars every time. And um uh, man, I don't know. It, it, I guess it sounds like I'm, people come off jaded, but like really, there's always stuff we're getting excited about. Um, you know, you've been to 100 races, and then sh- somebody shows up with you know the first 1992 Buick Skylark, and you you get excited about that, that <laughs> because you know like it's it's a terrible car, and you get excited about you know terrible cars and people with good stories about how they get these things. Um, so, I mean, uh, yeah, you always kind of have an idea when you go and, and the mechanical part of getting there and, and bringing all, all the stuff and setting it all up, you know, like that's, that's kind of routine and that gets a bit monotonous, but like once you get to the track and you're doing BS and, uh, 
BS inspection where we assess the $500 value. Very, it's a very scientific project or process. Um, and once you're in the middle of that and you're, you're talking to these guys and you're asking them, you know, like, where did you find, you know, the, the 72 Volkswagen square back or whatever, you know, like, and they dug it out of, they dug it out of grandpa's field in the back 40 under like three inches of dirt, you know, uh, getting those b- bits and pieces of like how people came to be there is always kind of the, the exciting thing for me at least. Um, and then kind of you know, checking in with them through the weekend. Cause uh, that first weekend for people is always just kind of funny. If you've done, you know, 20, 30 races and, and you watch these, these people who are, you know, fresh faced and everything's novel and exciting. And, uh, it, it's really cool to kind of experience that with people who are, you know, it's, it's all new to them and, and watching them go through all the same things that all new people go through, you know, where, you know, Oh, I didn't know we were going to need this part. And, you know, yes, we didn't bring any spares. Why would we bring spares? You know? And it's just, that, that stuff's really exciting to me from, from, from the, the point of being the official and the person who's telling those stories. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you have, you've written a lot, you know, mm-hmm. in the last, cause you've been doing, you've been doing the stories now for, if, this is going to sound terrible. It feels like at least a year. Like, has it been a yeah, couple of years now? It's been like a year and a half in an official capacity. Maybe a little longer. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's two years. <laughs> Jesus, time just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll call it two years. And mm-hmm. then uh, if I was judging at a race that Bill wasn't at, I, I usually wrote for when Car and Driver used to host uh, our, our recaps and stuff. So uh, yeah, off and on for another two years before that. So, do you have like a um, a favorite team, a favorite story in in that time? Oh man, oh man, uh, where do you even start? Uh, uh, it was funny because a couple of years ago, this actually a couple of years ago, uh, Phil and I started putting together a hundred greatest cars of lemons post, and uh, it ended up being a hundred and nineteen. And so there's this giant post on Roadkill. It's the greatest Lemons cars of all time, you know, and it's 119 cars deep. And, like, we omitted a solid, like, 100 cars that we wanted on there. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, like, I mean, uh, I think I was just doing these numbers recently. I think we've had something like 18,000 entries over over 12 years. Um, wow. And, and, you know, a lot of that is, you know, people who've done 30 races. That's just total entries, not total cars. But, uh. You know, we've probably had six, seven thousand cars that have done lemons over the years. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the percentage of people who are doing really crazy, insane stuff is pretty small in, in the grand scheme of things. But it's still like five or six hundred really awesome, crazy cars. Yeah. Uh, of them all, I think my favorite is the Geo Met Show. Are you familiar <laughs> with the Geo Met Show? No, but it, it sounds. Awesome, right off the get go. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's Geo Metro, as you might guess. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, these guys wanted to make a low buck Shogun. You know, you're familiar with the Shogun. The, I think yeah. it was a Festiva, yeah, which yeah. uh, mid engine with a show. Mm-hmm. So these guys did that with Geo Metro, um, but they did it all like in the true spirit of lemons, like scrounging stuff. Uh, they're junkyard savants, also. Um, so, and it, it was built originally at a golf course maintenance shed. Uh, so this guy was using everything he had on hand. There are mower blades, like as structural elements in this build. It's <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, there's a wood, no, not a wood post, but, uh, like a square tubing section from a basketball post as part of the subframe. Like it's just the most insanely hacked together thing. And it works. It it took them like three years to figure out the suspension geometry, but uh, uh, yeah, it works. Uh, they do really good parity liveries with it. Uh, it's currently painted up like the um, Apple computers themed, uh, or not themed, sponsored Porsche 935. But instead of Apple, it's awful computer, and it's you know this parody. And uh, the the whole build is on ZipTie.com, which is a forums. Uh, a forums, there you go, like the YouTubes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, you can go back and dig through that, and yeah, it's a phenomenal build. And uh, actually, one of the guys from Extreme Speed Motorsports, which is 
a team that races at Le Mans uh, sent them a bunch of their like takeoff turbos from their Le Mans car. So the the Met show is now twin turboed with like real Honda turbos off of a 600 horsepower Le Mans car. Oh, God. So I mean they've gone they've gone way past the 500 dollar budget, but uh, you know who cares at that point? Like they're never gonna win because it burns like 19 gallons of gas an hour, but. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just this this incredible build of, you know, scrounging weird stuff. I think they told me they have parts of 57 different cars in it. <laughs> that, that, that sounds about right. That 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 that's yeah. right up in my alley, right there. That's I I, mm-hmm. I found the picture of it, and if you need to you need to go look it up because it is amazing. The that that is awesome. Do you have now? Here, here's another one. Do you have a least favorite team? Like, did a team show up and just stand out? Like, these guys are doing this exactly all wrong. Um, I, I kind of lost you a little bit there, but I think you asked me if I have like a favorite team that kind of is like me or something that represents me. Is that right? No, I was asking like, is there a team that like shows up? We can ask that one too. But is there a team that like you know a least favorite team? A team that shows up and does it you know, oh, all wrong? Oh, least favorite. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's a weird thing with lemons where it, it's generally a very inclusive event, um, but it's also kind of self policing, you know, in, in a way. Uh, the people who the people who take racing too seriously and can't have a good time usually don't stick around, um, and we we do our best to kind of accommodate everybody because I think there's room for that in lemons but they're generally generally the people who show up and are not having fun are people who are make it difficult for other people to have fun I guess is a diplomatic way of saying that um, yeah. and, and usually they last a race or two and then they find somewhere else to race um, because I mean at the moment there's there's a plethora of options out there for, for people of that nature uh, mm. So I don't know. I, there's no re- really no teams I think that keep showing up. I guess that that I dislike is, well, is the next way of. Well, that's good. Let, let's mm. ask your question since you you brought it up. Do oh. you have a team that represents you? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, it is probably. Um, uh, and again, I work out of the Midwest, so I'm most familiar with the racers around here. But uh, there's a there's a team here called. Uh, called Bad Decisions Racing, which I appreciate. Uh, and they race a, a Pontiac Transport minivan. Uh, and they're never really very concerned about where they're finishing in the standings. Usually they're kind of planning what they're doing for dinner uh, <laughs> after the racing's over. And, uh, yeah, they're just generally not super competitive, but one of those teams that's very welcoming and, and loves taking in new people and kind of showing them the ropes. Um, so that that's kind of the, the I, I, again, the same thing I was just talking about a little bit ago. Like, I love meeting new teams and kind of finding out how they came to be uh, at a Lemons race and then kind of helping them through a weekend and asking them, checking in them on them, you know, seeing how their weekend's going. And uh, uh, the bad decision guys are, are really good about that also. So Yeah, I've... I'm wondering if that's um, the, I know I don't know if you know the Team Clear Coat guys is it another podcast group I think that might be mm-hmm. one of their father's racing team but okay uh, no I'm sorry because no t- they drive a Maserati I got it mixed up I was like I don't remember ah uh, yes yes the Maserati yeah I don't remember what um, their team name is for in my head is stuck in there stuck in there for a second that might be bad decisions but I am wrong so I retract my statement I misspoke um, to be fair we have had a number of bad decisions racing teams over the years it's, it's a fairly common name among mm-hmm. Lemons people this, this is with true. good reason yes yeah. mm-hmm. I will never disparage anyone on the inability to come up with an original name because uh, I can't figure out what to name this podcast so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was – let's go dive a little bit into your car history here because this is this is mm-hmm. something I, I always find curious. So what was the car you learned to drive on? Uh, I learned to drive uh, on – well, I guess two cars. Uh, at the time, my parents had – my mom had a 
Ford Taurus. I think it was a 93. Mm-hmm. The, just a generic Ford Taurus in not teal, but the, the slightly darker green. <laughs> uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, it was the color they made the show in. Like all of the shows were in that green. Um, the same same color, but not a show. Yeah. Um, it was just the Vulcan V6. And then my dad at the time had a like a 95 Ford Ranger. Mm. Uh, had clearly been like an ex-fleet car, like didn't have a radio, <laughs> you know, like uh, just no options at all. Um, so, mm. yeah, those are the two cars I learned to drive on. I could see how those would uh, endear you to kind of terrible cars. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never owned a nice car. That is 100% true. So what, I've only owned American crap, yeah. So what was the first car you had after you got out on your own? <laughs> what, what was the uh, car my, of Eric's Freedom? Uh, the car of Eric's Freedom was very limited in its range, but it was a 1985 Mercury Topaz two-door <laughs> in the in the like a bronzish gold. We called it the Chicken Nugget, mm. and it was I was the it was handed down from my sister who hit a deer with it, and I helped my dad rebuild it. It's the first time I went to a junkyard also. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my brother, uh, who was far more reckless than I was, absolutely beat the ever-loving piss out of that thing <laughs> before he gave it to me, <laughs> naturally. Um, so I kind of finished it off. <laughs> well, how did you take it out back and, you know, you know, take, put the bullets in it? What, what was its demise? Because there's always a story of the uh, demise. It, it, it was the classic... Tempo Topaz story, if you're familiar, where it just nickel and dimed us to death. Just just everything went wrong with it eventually over the years. But, uh, yeah, man, I grew up in uh, rural rural northern Illinois uh, where, you know, it's these big grids of uh, sometimes paved roads. And sometimes it was that, that, they call it crush and run or whatever, where they pour all the gravel out. They, they put the asphalt down and then they just pour gravel over it. And over over time, it just it's driven over so the, the stones set in it yeah uh, so it's this really coarse uh road so you know uh basically spending weekends with nothing to do and just driving over these roads for hours doing nothing <laughs> or nothing that i should ever admit to um <laughs> uh but i will say that uh you can bury the needle in a mercury topaz <laughs> with the crappy 2.3 liter if you have a solid like three miles of straight road, uh, uh, I think I, I doubt we ever got it into triple digits. My brother claimed to have, and then oil started squirting out of the hood onto the windshield. So uh, it, it was it was a pretty sick car by the time I inherited it. Basically, yeah, it, it was it was begging to be put down at that point. So. Oh, yeah. So what was the – what is the car you're driving around these days? Uh, I have a 2004 Ford Focus CX-3, okay. which is a totally adequate car. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also – I've had it for eight years also, and it's suffering Midwest malady. It looks like the Titanic underneath. <laughs> um, and there's just nothing you can do about that. Um, no. So it's it's most of its way out also. Um mm-hmm. And then uh, last fall, I bought a Lemons Rally car from a competitor. Uh, so I, I have a 1990 Olds Cutlass Cruiser wagon in my garage. Nice. Uh, yeah. To it's, drive uh, or to rally? Uh, it's it's I drive it around all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I probably will never take it on a rally, but it's it's an awesome road trip car. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just get it up to 70 on the highway, and it just sits there perfectly yeah. and cruises all day yeah yeah that's a Great. um that is a sofa on wheels basically 100 percent. oh yeah totally uh you get in and like it, the four-way power seat works on it still somehow uh which is amazing uh and then like you know you just tilt the seat back and it's it's like you're sitting in a, it's like you're driving a lazy boy it's fantastic <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so since we're talking about being up north and we're talking about the rally. I want to circle back to this one real fast. So there's a new rally that's going to take you into the first foreign country of a rally, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, this is Lemon's first visit to Canada. Um, 
so this is the Great Lakes mistake, as we're calling it. Uh, and it departs from South Haven, Michigan, the day after the Lemons race there at the, I think it's June 30th and July 1st. So the rally departure point is going to probably be the racetrack. I don't know if that's confirmed yet, but mm-hmm. it's going to be in South Haven. Uh, July 2nd, from there, all the way around all of the Great Lakes. So uh, South Haven to Wausau, Wisconsin, and then up to uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, into Canada, and then uh, all the way around from Canada, like towards uh, Niagara Falls, basically from there, over three days, Mm. (laughs) three-ish, and then Cleveland and, and back to South Haven. I think it's six days is the whole rally. It's basically the week of July 4th. Yep. I like and July 4th is in Sault Ste. Marie on the Canadian side. So yep. we'll be in Canada on the 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Now, now, when is Canada's fake Independence Day? Isn't that like that same weekend? Aren't Who they like, cares? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> nobody cares. I mean, uh, they're, I don't even I mean, have to be nice about it because they're going to apologize to me about <laughs> insulting them. So. Mm-hmm. Do we have to strap big American <laughs> flags to our cars as we go th- screaming through and launch off fireworks and shoot guns? At, you know, just no, to... you don't have to. You don't have to, but it, it's always recommended. <laughs> it's usually the best way to go. <laughs> yeah. Just remember, if you write Canada sucks on your car, you have to write it in English and in French because that's the French. way the law works up there. So, uh, the Canadian I, Bacon. Is that the movie that that's from? Yes, that is the movie that's from. I'm surprised yes. you got that. You know what? It's the yeah. Midwest and we sat inside yeah. all winter long and... You know, that's 100%. how that works. Yep. Um, actually, wasn't that played quite often during Cubs rainouts on WGN? Now that I'm thinking about it. Mm, man, you know, WGN was like one of three TV stations I actually grew up with. I should know the answer to that, but yeah. that totally would make sense. Yeah. yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Yeah, Cause it was, <laughs> it, I mean, John Candy is the old style of comedy. So, yeah. I mean, that, that checks out for, mm-hmm. for Cubs fans. That joke will be got by three of your listeners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there's a fair bit in Chicago. Let's go super <laughs> Let's go super narrow Chicago talk, too, because um, we're, so we're starting in Michigan, and then we're going into, you know, down through Indiana into Illinois, and this is my excuse to just pick up as much, mm-hmm. you know, food as possible. So I need you to make sure there's a stop at a Portillo's and an Illuminati's, mm-hmm. all right? And then preferably a you're, Caputo's. So you're... You're the Lou Melnati's guy. That, that's your that's your go-to for deep dish. Yeah. Well, there was one in my uh, hometown in Naperville, so All an right, old gotcha. fire and engine place. Giordano's is – what, are you a Giordano's guy? What are you – do you know I, – I, I, I I'm a Gino's East guy, I have to say. Although, mm-hmm. you know, as you and I both know, um, people who – natives of Chicago in the area don't eat that much deep dish pizza. Mm-hmm. Just you, – you don't. You eat thin crust like 99% of the time. And then once in a while, you go and you have the deep dish. So, but, you know. as a native Chicagoan, I will agree to that. The issue I have, though, is now that I live outside of the area and no one around mm-hmm. here knows how to make a decent fucking pizza in any way, shape, or form. Correct. Uh, 100% uh, true. Yes. Like, well, what do you mean we got a flavor to dough? Like, there's tomatoes on it. That's where the flavor comes from. And we just throw the yeah. cheese on top. And it then it has this giant greasy, like, you know, drippy mm. dick thing that we do with it and everyone loves it. It's like, no, that's not fucking yeah. pizza. But yeah, um it's a travesty is what it is. Yeah. So it's an abomination. Uh, it is. And like I'm gonna be in New York next week or mm. when you're hearing this a week from then. And it's just gonna be like they're gonna like try and offer me like a hot dog and like pizza. I'm gonna be like, that's not real hot dog or pizza. Shame on yeah. you. False. Um yeah. you know the only thing that's a bigger abomination and this is a global thing is the uh the cookie cake at the birthday, you know what I'm talking about? Where they make a giant chocolate chip cookie that's like a cake size. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> that thing. Yes, I, I also agree. <laughs> Isn't that also? No, that's fudgy to whale. I'm thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> no, cake is allowed. Covering the important issues here. Yeah, listen. This is this is what the show devolves into, and this is what really makes me. You know, it's what I enjoy, and then the listeners stick around if they want to stick around. Um. So I need you to make sure there's, you know, a stop in a couple of those places. Um, preferably a Caputo's, too, so I could pick up some stuff at the uh, uh, deli there, you know, or at the bakery, rather, because uh, the wife likes the lemons cookies. So, but I'm curious, have you have you 
thought at all about how the cars are going to get, you know, up through Wisconsin and into Canada? Like, what if they just go, we don't want these shitty cars in our country? Yeah, uh, that w- we're well aware there's some possibility, not necessarily of the cars being turned away, but um, the, the Canada isn't necessarily the most welcoming place uh, if you have, you know, uh, occasional legal troubles, yeah. <laughs> which we're, we're never going to say, you know, whatever. Um, so uh, I think we are coming up with an alternate plan for uh, people and or cars that get turned away at the border. Um, so mm-hmm. there, there, there may be an alternate route that ends up on the uh, U.S. side of, of the St. Mary's River and Sault Ste. Marie. So, so there's I think like... that's roughly a plan. There's going to be like an alternate route, which we've done in the past. Um, usually there have been times where we offer two routes, you know, and you kind of pick the lesser of the evil or whatever you prefer to be doing. So. Mm-hmm. This will just kind of be a, an outgrowth of that, I think, is the plan. Mm. Uh, Steve McDaniel is the guy who's doing all that planning, so it, it's ultimately his call. Mm-hmm. Well, I need you to tell him Portillo's Luminati's Capoodles. Um, we'll do. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, a, a good friend of this show, GTB Johnny, has a detailing shop in Wisconsin, too. We should definitely stop at that. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. A whole bunch of shitty cars that have never been detailed sitting in a detailing shop. I think that's good advertising, right? Isn't that how that's that works? Actually, yeah. Does he want to sponsor the rally? <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> before this episode comes out, I will. Uh, you know, shoot him a thing. I don't think he can sponsor it. I don't think. I don't think detail shops yeah. make that much money. But um, the um, yeah, man, I can't imagine doing the. I was going to ask if it was McDaniel's doing it again, or if you had any input on it, because that just seems like that would take forever to do all of that because does he go and run the route ahead of time uh sometimes as time allows i don't think he's gonna have as much time to run this one although steve steve's an interesting guy uh we'll leave it <laughs> i'm not gonna go too far into his his travels but steve travels all the time usually like puts 30 or forty thousand miles on a year yeah um uh and one of his regular residences is in the upper peninsula so he's generally familiar with the area um and has probably driven most of it before mm-hmm. um and i think in his lifetime he's put something like a million and a half miles on <laughs> uh so he's seen pretty much everything on the continent at this point and mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff is just pulled from memory which is awesome yeah. um the route 66 rally is going to be really good because he's driven that hundreds of times so mm-hmm. So the if I'm unable to make the July 4th rally because there's a lot of times I got crap I got to do around July 4th, although right now it's looking good, right. I, I will be doing the Route 66 rally. I'm doing one mm-hmm. of these two because these rallies are so fun and they're so – and I need you to yeah. not say anything positive about my cars when I show up. So, yeah. Um, and the I, trick I per- is to bring really crap, crappy cars. <laughs> to bring like a 71 Vega and you'll be totally fine. Well – it's interesting you say that. So I still have the same Volvo, right? So uh, could we – this is an interesting hypothetical. So it's, a, it's the 91 Volvo. It's fairly reliable in the way it was, and you gave it, I think, like half of the available points just for sheer crappiness of the interior. Um, sure. Now it's got a uh, Chevy straight six from a 69 Nova sitting inside of it. So, oh, yeah. are we going up in points or down in points? Uh, is the you put it in the car like it's it's in the engine bay powering the wheels? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Lots of points for that. Mm-hmm. You've gone way down in the reliability. <laughs> I mean, pe- people say old American straight sixes are indestructible, and that's generally not true. Um, people just didn't drive straight six cars very hard. I think that's the, so. I mean, if you're not driving an engine hard, it's it's it tends to last. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, true. true. The but I the reason so I have the car with the Chevy Straight Six now is because um, I was thinking, you know, because I got stranded in West Virginia with uh, I met the most redneck person in my life in the town of Burnsville, yeah. which was the sheriff, who informed me if we had broken Checks down. Out. Yeah. If we had broken down any further on the way to um, Memphis, like, it's a good thing you broke down here. 
any further on, and you'd be dealing with them fucking hillbillies. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, mm. you know, we met, like, two of your, like, local meth heads yesterday. Like, well, what are you? And one of them tried to fight us, and I think the other one was trying to get us into some sort of illegal sex ring. So um, yeah. I wish that was a joke. Um, two sides of the same <laughs> coin, really, in West Virginia, from my experience also. Yeah. Beautiful but, country, though. No, absolutely gorgeous. Um, just you know, you hear banjo music run. Um, a little intense, yeah, yeah. But you go to the Napa Auto Parts and you say, "I need parts for a Volvo," and they look at you funny and go, "Like you mean one of them lady bits?" You say, "I need parts yeah. for an old Chevy Straight Six," and they go, "Oh, we got them around back." So yeah, yeah. So yeah. now that was kind of the idea. So hopefully, if we break down, although Canada now, who knows? It'll be like, oh, we have plenty of Volvo parts. We don't know anything about your Chevy straight sixes. Go back to America, you yank. Um, <laughs> sorry about being rude. We apologize. Um, so I don't know, it's going to be – I totally lost where I was going with all that, but that's kind of my plan, no, my I, modus operandi. So It's as good a plan as any, really. I mean, mm-hmm. if you try and go into the little lemons rally with some kind of plan, you're going to end up – throwing it away immediately <laughs> so mm-hmm. it, it's kind of a roll with it uh, kind of situation generally speaking um so I, and i as far as we can tell people seem to enjoy that mm-hmm. I, I don't know the type of people who show up and are very rigorous planners tend not to yeah. stick with lemons rally very much <laughs> yeah i don't think if you're the sort of person who needs a plan it, that's the sort of thing that attracts you to uh <laughs> the rally or the lemons in general. I mean, maybe it kind of. It, it, I mean, the whole that, model could a, be wing it. I mean, it's an interesting point. Um, the people who win races are usually really organized people, um, and that's interestingly probably the thing that is most important in winning races. Because I mean, uh, if I had a dollar for every team that was like you know leading four hours into a 15 hour race and then like their third driver just mysteriously disappeared before he was supposed to get in the car or whatever. And they couldn't find him. Like, you know, they're like trying to suit up somebody else to get in the car, you know, like, and, and that, you know, they lose 10 minutes but trying to find the dude who was, you know, dropping a deuce or whatever the case <laughs> may be. Um, you know, like you know, the teams that win, like they know the dude, the dude knows he's going to be driving. So he's going to go, you know, sit on the crap or yeah. 20 minutes, you know, an hour in the race. So he doesn't have this problem, you know, uh, crapping is generally not the best example of explaining organization, but you know, they, everybody knows where everybody else is on the team and, and they, they show up with the car ready to race basically. Um, and, and that's again, like it's weird how lemons works out, uh, in, and who comes there, I guess, you know, so you get these 10% of people who build weird stuff and then, you know, go find the Volkswagen 411 in the weeds uh, and they want to race the weird stuff. And then you get like 5% of people who want to build these crazy Frankenstein type machines. The people who really want to win badly is probably also about 10%. And then, you know, three quarters of the field is people who just want to just want to be in a race car. Like yeah. the plain and simple want a lot of cheap seat time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Lemons is totally on board with that too. You know, yeah. as long as you don't mind racing like a, you know, a 91 Civic, you know, that's, mm-hmm. you know, seat time is seat time. Mm-hmm. What is the most prevalent type of car? My guess would be a Porsche 944. It's actually a BMW 3 Series, yeah. Uh, The E30 especially, and the E36 starting to be pretty common. Hmm. Uh, Actually, the E36 is probably starting to become more common because people actually want E30s now um, (laughs) for streetcars and and projects and other stuff. But uh, I almost feel like Lemons had a lot to do with the E30's resurgence in popularity. Um you know, it was always kind of a niche thing, uh, like in the 90s and the early 2000s. And then uh, once Jalopnik came around and Lemon's coverage started being a major part of Jalopnik, it's around 2008, 09, you know, like the E30 was suddenly everywhere. Yeah. You know, it was winning races and there were, you know, 10, 15 of them in a given race. And, and I don't know, I, I just feel like that being out there and 
being pretty well known as a, a good, durable car in lemons and to some extent on the street, and also very findable at the time for cheap. Um, I, don't know, I feel like that probably had something to do with, with driving people towards that as a popular car. Mm. Do you... Maybe I'm misguided. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wondered, so... Do you think there will ever be a point where there will be like a Barrett Jackson and a you know, <laughs> former Lemons car is going to roll up across there and like, this BMW E30 was raced at, you know, the 24 hours yeah. of Lemon. Like, I could see it selling for big money. Maybe, you know, people laugh when, you know, people bought yeah. those GTs out in behind a Carroll Shelby shop. Like, those will never be worth anything. They're junk. They mm-hmm. chopped them up. I've... I've I'm thinking 50 years from now, like this, this 24 hours of lemons car was raced by Eric Rude. There we go. So, <laughs> yeah, it could yeah. happen. Maybe, maybe take a little bit, but yeah. You know. I hope not. I, I really hope not. I mean, the whole purpose of lemons is basically, you know, taking these cars that are already doomed and just keeping them around for another couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess it's possible that something like, uh, I saw racing's Miata or uh, or Ferkel. Are you familiar with Ferkel the 911? No, I'm not. It's a it's a Porsche. It's an 83 Porsche 911 that was rolled over, and then uh, some guys put a Volkswagen Jetta TDI motor in the back. <laughs> so it sounds like a tractor. That's um, awesome. You know, it's great. Uh, it's one of the greatest Lemons cars, you know, ever built. Just because it's so so obnoxiously. Um, God, what's the word for it? Uh, sacrilegious, you know, yeah. like oh, the Porsche 911 is an untouchable car, and you know they found this one that literally every body panel had been hammered when it rolled over, and you know they sold the drivetrain out of it for real money, and then uh, you know threw this garbage diesel motor in it, and it clanks like a tractor, and the whole car shakes, and it's just hilarious. Um, but it's still a 911. I could see that car maybe bringing kind of real money someday. Well, that's, uh, but but that's no, I, I, I don't really that, think... Uh, Porsche prices have gone absolutely insane if that car sells for decent money. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I want to, before we end for the evening, there are some, um, I call them the inside the actor studio questions. These are, you know, to, to get to the base car person that lives inside of you. So, I think this is the way to... Uh, help us, you know, understand who you are as a car person. So um, these are as we sit today because our opinions and thoughts on cars change hour by hour, sometimes minute by minute. So to give you an idea of what I mean by that, like, you know, this is a hard question. I like to lead off with it, though. What is your favorite car? Uh, I guess it's a product of probably not growing up like as a car dude. But uh, I got three of them that I, I will own at some point. Uh, one of them's a, like a late 70s Alfa Romeo GTV6. Um, just love the way those sound. They're kind of ugly, but I can live with that. <laughs> um, I love the very first Mercury Comets, so like 59, 60, 61. And then um, the Datsun 510, like a 510 uh, sedan. I don't know why. It just looks like a perfect car shape, I guess. I do love the 510 myself. And it's a gorgeous mm-hmm. little car. It's, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, it's just so perfectly boxy. Um, yeah. What is your least favorite car? Ooh, uh, I'm not a supercars guy. I, I don't know. They just don't appeal to me. I, I guess it's part of that whole Midwestern upbringing, growing up around, you know, super practical cars. I love the, my favorite story is like the most exotic car in my hometown was a, like a 1980 G body El Camino. Um, so like, I don't know it, the the exotics thing wore off on me pretty quickly. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, Lamborghini Gallardo, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's not a terrible answer. It's um, a little different than all the other folks. I will admit yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's it's a very broad category of just supercars, probably. Mm-hmm. What modification trend do you find yourself, maybe you don't want to do to your own car, but you find yourself attracted to? So, like, 
you know, stance, bro dozer, you know, giant exhaust stuff, you know, the roll of coal mm-hmm. guys, a- any of that, like what, you know, anything that you're like, I don't like it, may, or that you say I like, maybe I don't want to do it in my own car, but I like it. I appreciate the aesthetic value of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a good set of wheels on my car is probably the only modification I'll ever make to it. Um, mm-hmm. But generally speaking, I love people to go ironically seeing as though I don't like supercars I love when people go over the top with modifications so like uh, people love to dump on slabs are you familiar with slabs oh that's where like they take yeah they take the yeah thing and they like push out like the wire wheels and all that crazy stuff yep yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, like some of those builds the customization on them is so over the top that it's it's mind blowing uh I nominated well I think it was actually Sajeev from The Truth About Cars nominated one for Universal Car of the Year a few years ago, (laughs) and I wrote about it. And it's the What Debt Teal Do uh, slab. Go look that up because the customization on that is fantastic, and I love seeing that kind of thing, like where you just, you know, they they poured like, ah, there must be like 70 grand in that thing. It's fantastic. Uh, So, I don't know, and it's like an 81 Cadillac. To bill or something stupid like you know <laughs> yeah uh, that's great to me what is your least favorite modification trend the ones you look at and you go i don't understand why you'd ever do that to a vehicle <sighs> yeah i don't know i don't really i don't really i guess like you know the thing i saw recently about uh i think it was in japan where they uh they like bling out supercars. I'll say that. Mm. Uh, generally speaking, I don't. However, you want to make your car, I'm totally fine with that. I'm I'm not too judgmental on that. Mm-hmm. I drive. I bought. I spent money on a 1990 Oldsmobile Cutlass Cruiser. Like I have no room to talk to anybody about what they do with their their money and their cars. <laughs> I, I get that. You know, there's there's an aesthetic value though. There, there's not like one you look at and you go just aesthetic wise. I just don't like that one. Mm. No, no. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to change my answer for favorite modification though, and go straight to Bosazoku. That's totally where it's at. So Bosazoku, yeah, that's where they do like all the crazy tailpipes and all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, they just exaggerate all the modification elements you can do. You know, the star exhaust and the three foot long splitter and the whole thing. Yeah, hilarious. I love it. So, what car do you dread to be stuck behind at a red light? Yeah, I'll go with coal rolling uh, three foot high off the ground or three foot lifted, uh, you know, diesel pickup. Yeah, because you're just going to inhale fumes for the next hour, basically. Yeah, Um, I have no problem with diesels, but uh, yeah, that's just obnoxious mm -hmm. for no reason. Yep. No, I totally get that one. That's especially obnoxious in Illinois for some reason to me, especially out yeah, in corn country. Yeah. 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 It. I will never understand. This is a, a, a quite a little bit of this off topic here, but you're driving around. You're in Illinois. You got a license plate that says Land of Lincoln, and you're driving around with a lifted pickup truck with a Confederate battle flag on the back of it that says Heritage, not Hate. And you're like, that yeah. literally – cannot be more opposite the two things you're driving around <laughs> yeah. in. Like, I don't get, like, you have to pick one. Like, you either can't... Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, it's just mind-boggling to me. Um, what automotive sound or noise do you love? Um, Alfa Romeo V6, unmuffled. Mm, that is a good one. Fantastic sound. Mm-hmm. What sound or noise do you hate? Rotaries. <laughs> Especially unmuffled rotaries. Uh, my God, nothing is worse at a lemons race than listening to a rotary just blast by. So damn, so annoying. <laughs> I think you just made some enemies there, sir. Um, in the automotive world, what profession other than your own would you like to try? Or would you think you'd be good at in another universe? Um. I think uh, it would actually be like a race car engineer, like mm-hmm. doing the, the setup and the race strategy. Mm-hmm. 
what job in the automotive space would you least want to do? Hmm. This one's a tough mm, one. It is a tough one. Yeah. Uh, I think I think doing marketing at a major OEM, I think, would probably be probably that. Mm-hmm. It's because you're never going to do it. You, you, it's never going to go well. <laughs> Even when it goes well, it's not going well. Yeah. What is your automotive pet peeve? Um. Uh, too much car. So, you know, the the stereotypical soccer mom with the gigantic Infinity QX70 yeah. or one kid, um, you know. Uh, and, and I guess the, the broader uh, implication of that is just cars as a status symbol, I guess. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm sensing a trend in your... See, this is how we get. I to like the- crap. I love crap. I love like you know this uh, uh, utilitarianism of automobiles. I guess. I-, I think, you know, proof that kind of like you know where you come from, you kind of get cut from a similar cloth. There's this aspect of car culture where it is the aspirationalism is kind of a turnoff to a lot of people I know who I grew up with out there. And I, th- I think that shows through in what you're saying. Like, you, you don't have to care about a car as a status symbol. It's a thing that you can love and be proud of, yeah. but you don't need to be showing off. Yeah, I mean, I'm if if you're buying a, a luxury car because you want to be comfortable and have the features that it offers, and maybe you know whatever. If you're buying like a BMW Sport sedan, you know, like you want to take it to the track for a track day once or twice a year, like. That is a sensible purchase to me, but uh, yeah, if you're buying the the X5 to truck your kid around, do soccer practice, and you know, you never have more than two people in the car, yeah, I, that's stupid, and I hate that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you made this you made this next question extremely difficult, but I'm gonna try my best here. Um, I'm okay. gonna give you two cars. You have to pick one of them, and this is your new daily driver for the rest of your life. You have no choice. You're not allowed to change it, <laughs> modify it, whatever. It comes pre-modified, and you got to take it that way. So the one is you get a Lamborghini Gallardo, but it's all Bose Zuku that. So giant exhaust on it, you know, crazy over the top, everything. Just, like, more scoopy, more everything, more over the top. The other one is, yeah. and you made this really hard, a... Datsun 510 all blinged out, so a lot of fake chrome all over the this, this yeah. side. What do you go with? You know, I like Bosuzoku enough. <laughs> I think I would drive a guy or a little as the big, you know, 12 foot tall star exhaust on it. I think I think I would be that asshole. <laughs> I think that I think it'd be especially interesting. Around the Midwest, especially given the oh, yeah. time. Yeah. If you look at like an alien, yeah, it'd mm-hmm. be great. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially out in corn country. I, I just can't imagine, you know, like pulling up to that like, gas station middle of nowhere, yeah. filling up the Lambo. Like, so what did you do to that dang old car? Is that, is that one of the new Japanese thing? Like, yeah. It, oh, yeah. I, I literally didn't see a Porsche until I was like 15, and I was in Chicago. Like that was just a thing I never saw, like growing up. Like, uh, and uh, one of my brother's friends bought a Miata, and that was like super exotic. Like, oh man, the thing must have like 900 horsepower, mm-hmm. something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a 91. It's it's only got two doors. This is amazing. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd seen Camaros. Come on. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot. You grew up in that part of the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, listen, the murderers dump off the corpses out in the cornfield, so of course you're going to see Camaros. That's how that works. Yeah. Um, like, you didn't see nothing, but this car is sweet, isn't it? Hop back in your IROC and take off. So, um, <laughs> so the next two questions, I think, are the most important questions that any... You know, journalists can ask of anyone, you know, I, I hope one day to be able to ask people in power because I think this, these questions will fix humanity. And 
you know, they're that important. So I'm ready. I'm ready. For the, these were put in the prepared questions. So I hope you thought long and hard about both of these. What is okay. the hardest food to eat while driving? You would think it would be like something super messy, like uh, like tacos or something. Mm-hmm. The answer is always the opposite of that. So it's totally a McDonald's cheeseburger because no matter what you do, you think you, you ate it totally cleanly. And then you get where you're going and you look down and you have ketchup and mustard stain on your shirt. Mm. And usually you're going somewhere semi-important or you're going somewhere where people will actually see you, which is why you're eating on the, in a hurry. Yeah. That's it. That's it right there. I so I do rank these, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure where to put that. I like your premise. I'm going to give you points for the mm-hmm. premise because we get a lot of times where it's it's like a silly, simple answer of like, "Well, I just don't need in cars, so everything's the hardest thing to eat while driving." And I just tell them, "No, you're wrong. You read in your car. I don't mm-hmm. care how like <laughs> fastidious you are. You've eaten in your car. No, you have. There's crumbs. I've been in an Uber. Yeah." I don't think it. Okay, I've never taken an Uber. Uh, to yeah, I've very rarely taken a cab unless I've been just absolutely hammered. So I'm not sure if I would want to eat in another man's car. Hmm. That, that's just purely. But I, I like we're going with that. So I'm I'm going to give you points for creativity on that one. So not to sound too. Rude. The current lead, the current the, the, leader in the club. Oh, house. how the tables have turned! Oh, yeah. how the tables have turned! The morning <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Uh, I'm not. I don't think that's going on the top ten of the leaderboards. I will say the McDonald's hamburgers are. There's almost always a pickle that slides out, no matter what you can do. Yeah. So I'll, 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 I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. You come from the land of the drive-through, though. I was expecting I was expecting something a little bit better out of you. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I'm just saying. Sorry. Fifty points. Um, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Now, here's your chance for redemption. What's the hardest makeup to apply while driving? You know, I, I always put my face on before I leave the house, mm. which is totally not the answer. That you're um, <laughs> I might go with a Juggalo makeup. <laughs> yeah, you got to do that before or after. I mean, you can't do that while you're driving. <laughs> You know what? Um, you did not disappoint. That is that is <laughs> that is a good point because uh, you got the face paint, and it's I'm sure it's not the highest quality stuff. So um, I'm, that's moving you up into the top of the leaderboards. I, I am I, I am making a note of that. <laughs> My, you know, congratulations that that is you you've redeemed yeah, yourself. Right at that. Yeah. Lemons has a weird obsession with Juggalos. It's a long story, but basically. The Lemons is based out of the San Francisco Bay, and they just had never heard of Juggalos until they started traveling for races. So they were at a race in Ohio at Nelson Ledges, which is where near where the first gatherings of the Juggalo were held. So suddenly they were thrust into this world of what the hell is all of this? <laughs> so it's been a fascination for almost 10 years now. There's, I mean, magnets, man, how do they work? Um, ah, yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I work with an eclectic group of people, and uh, mm-hmm. I remember when that song came out. One of my coworkers came up to me, and he's like, "I used to listen to the Juggalos when I was in high school, or the Insane Clown Posse yeah. when I was in high school." And I'm trying to figure out if they're being serious or not. And I said, "Yeah, I've learned far more about you than I a, needed to know or wanted to know." Yeah. And I'm not sure we can be friends anymore because I'm not sure I can be a friend with someone who used to listen on purpose to the insane clown posse. Um, yeah. I was like, Ugh. I need to know. I don't want to know, but I need to know if you ever put the makeup on. Um, if he said yes, I was just going to leave. I was just going to drop what I was doing. Yeah. And just be like, I'm out. I'm, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like dabbling in drugs, I think, probably. You know, yeah, yeah, listen to ICP, man. Mm-hmm. I got better. I got better. That's rehab. You know, I, I, you know, I, I what, ooh, what is, so if you, that, that's a question maybe for another time, but like if they're, if the ICP is the like, you know, hardcore stuff, like the meth, what's like the mm-hmm. methadone to get you off of that and onto like, you know, the normal stuff? Like, it's 
got to be Coldplay. It has to be Coldplay. Well, I feel like Coldplay is like way to the opposite direction. Like, there's got to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want like a medium, a middle ground? Like, like yeah. what? What is that step down? Like, you know, Coldplay is like your. Uh, if ICP is yeah. meth, Coldplay is like you know a quaalude. Like you don't. Nyquil. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the, Coldplay's yeah. to knock off Nyquil because they got no flavor and it's just kind of like, does it work? Eh, I guess it's good enough. Like, I will say that uh, one of the. the greatest email games I've come up with with some of the people from Lemons HQ is the, uh, if you go look up, just Google J-Body Clubs, um, so, you know, Cavalier, Sunfire, Sunbird, whatever, mm-hmm. every single name of a J-Body Club could easily be the name of one of the recording artists on ICP's recording <laughs> or music label. So you could play the, the fantastic game, uh, ICP record label or act or J body club and it, it's it's totally legit it's great and it's really hard if, if you give somebody a quiz as long as I just bring it back to cars that comes out. Mm-hmm. yeah so that's not what we do on the show we, we we get the car stuff out of the way then we move on to food and you know stuff it, like that juggle mm-hmm. so important stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back. I, I know we're a little over time here but you know another important question so what were the three channels because it was WGN you know, WCIU, did you get that out there in corn country? Uh, it used to just be 5, 7, 9, and 11. We used to get WTTW also. Mm, yeah. So NBC, ABC, WGN, and PBS. Mm. Sometimes CBS, depending on the weather. So just far enough out that, like, uh, the low low frequency had a lot of interference usually. Mm. How, far, and, how far from Chicago were you? No, no, I was here. I was in um you're familiar with Shavana, Illinois. It's mm. kind of nine hundred people just south of DeKalb, about fifteen minutes. Uh, okay. So, so I know where DeKalb is. So not yeah. too far. My um yes. graduating class in high school was bigger than your town. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. my graduating class was forty eight. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's a thing. Uh but I mean I think we were Sixty-five miles from downtown Chicago. That's roughly. not too bad. Yeah, just just out of radio range, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I blame them also. Yeah. In the summer, we could barely get the the Chicago FM stations. Mm-hmm. What's weird to me is so I'm in Maryland right now. I'm just south of Baltimore, and mm-hmm. this time of the night, if I turn my again, this is this we're super off topic, but who gives a crap? If I turn my um, Radio to uh, 780, I'll pick up, um, you know, WBBM. Yeah, nice. 700 yeah. and some miles away, and it's like, yeah, I can still get WBBM. So, AM stations are crazy like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Clear channel, awesome. or whatever the hell they're called. So, um, yeah. now that everyone has stopped listening, because we went on to a super tangent, um, <laughs> where where can we find you on the internet? Where can we find your work, and how do we get to mm-hmm. it? So. All right, uh, this I'll try and keep the list quick. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at my personal stuff at the Rusty Hub. That's T H E whatever the Rusty Hub, all one word. Uh, also on Facebook with that. I also am doing a lot of the 24 Hours of Lemons and Lemons Rally social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or all of those basically. And then um, write ups and stuff on Roadkill.com. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much it. And if you need to email me about lemon stuff, Eric at twenty four hours of lemons dot com, and that's Eric with a C. Mm. Who did the social media before you? Uh, it's kind of been a joint effort uh, over the years. Uh, so Nick Pon and uh, Phil, and then there's a couple other guys who help out. I mean, it, it still is that way, but I've just been mm. going a little more. We're, we're basically trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. So um, I'm in the middle of doing all that, mm-hmm. figuring out what works. Um, it it, it seems like riveting, riveting stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it seems like uh, like a month or so, not a month, or so, like six months ago, it was like if you just like at 24 hours of lemons, like I had a poop, it would just be retweeted. Like, yeah, we're just going to retweet everything that comes in. Oh um, yeah, if you if you tweet at, at at 24 hours of lemons, we'll pretty much retweet it. Yeah, whatever. We don't we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> tweet it right out. No, it, it is it is a fantastic because there's a lot of crazy people doing a lot of crazy stuff. So you need to go check it all out. So Eric, yep. I know I'm keeping you up kind of late. You know, even though you're an hour 
behind or whatever how that works again. Um, so or time zones. Uh, yeah, time zones, man. How did it work? Um, yeah. <laughs> Full circle. Yep. Full circle. It always comes back to the insane clown posse. I God, I hope that's the last time I ever utter that <laughs> sentence. Uh, so I'm going to say goodbye to you off air for everyone who's listening. I will be right back after this break. So, Hey there, Danny with Right Foot Down. I messed up this ad read so many times because I really want to tell you about Track Monkey Apparel. They make great quality, enthusiast shirts, along with hats, stickers, watches, patches, you name it. A couple of my personal favorites are their Life is Better at the Track Tee, and their One Track Mind Tea. You should really check them out and see for yourself. Their products are great for you or the gearhead in your life. Visit trackmonkeyapparel.com. I want to thank everyone for listening. Make sure if you like what you hear, you tell a friend, loved one, coworker, whoever you think may enjoy this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this evening. So thanks, everyone, uh, all the new listeners. It's always fun to watch those numbers grow and grow. So thanks, everyone, for spreading the good word. And make sure you leave a review on iTunes. Of course, you can always follow the show at Untitled Car Show on it. basically all social media. So at Untitled Car Show on Instagram, Twitter, which is where we're most active, and uh, the Facebook. I'm getting old, the Facebook. All right. Thanks, everyone, so much for listening. Have a good night. Have a good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is there. Thank you so much for listening. Please be safe out there. <laughs>